Hey, Joy Blue here, and I want to tell you about the having clause within the SQL language. So to start here with, I want to do a quick select from the employee table. And what we want to do is we first need to do a group by. So I want to group by the job and get the sum of all the salaries. So we want to put job, comma, and we want the sum of the salaries. And then we need to group by the job. And so I'll execute that. And you can see that we have the sum of each of the types of, of jobs, of the salaries. But now the having clause gives us a way to filter what we're going to group by. So I'm going to say having, and I want to say having salary, actually having the sum of the salary. And I only want bigger than 5,000. So I'm going to say greater than 5,000. And when that happens, it's going to filter our list down. And it should filter it to 1, 2, 3. And we won't get the president because we only have a we don't have an equal to here. So let's see what happens. And there you go. So we filtered the the groups down to our certain criteria. Now some of you might be asking, why didn't we just use a WHERE clause? Well, the WHERE clause will filter the initial set of data. So if we use this with the WHERE clause, that'll actually throw individual people out. So let me show you what I mean by that. So select star from employee. And in this case, we have these salaries. And so we can't use a sum because we haven't rolled everything up yet. So if we did this, we wouldn't get any employees. And so this, this does it row by row. But if we go back to the having clause, and then if we just run that, well what it does is it first sums everything up and groups by the job and then it does our filter. So we could just get the ones that are equal to 5,000, the ones that are less than 5,000. And so the having clause is another way to filter after you've grouped everything. So that's an introduction to the having clause in the SQL language.